Now that we've learned the basics of probability, it's time to expand our repertoire of probability rules so that we can start finding some more complicated probabilities than we did in section 5.1. And we're going to begin with the addition rule and complements. Now before we can get into the addition rule and complements, we need to first study a definition, which is disjoint events. Disjoint events, also known as mutually exclusive events, are events that have nothing in common. In other words, it's impossible to have both events at the same time simultaneously. So for a disjoint event, let's consider the humble 20-sided die, just for an example. So over here, in this event E, I could have it be less than 5. So that would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in here. And let's say this event F, I'm going to say more than 10, for example. So more than 10, 10 doesn't count. So it would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I'm going to have to go down row, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I cannot toss this die once and have it land in both this space, less than 5, and this space, more than 10 simultaneously. It's either in one or the other, or it could technically be in none, which is the box, what the box represents. The box is the remaining pieces of the sample space that are not in either one of these events, which would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right? They're the remaining pieces of the sample space. So when I roll the die, 18, I'm in this circle, which means I'm automatically not in this circle. I cannot be more than 10 and less than 5 simultaneously. They're mutually exclusive. All right, what about an example of things that are not disjoint? Well, I could do it with a die, but that's not that much fun. <laughs> Let's think of something more interesting. How about, ooh, I know, event E is your house has cat, a cat or more than one cat, I should suppose. And F is you have dogs, or a dog. I personally have two. Okay, so you can imagine we could have students over here on this side that have cats but no dogs. That's this little half moon shape. And over here are students that have dogs but no cats. And the middle would have both. Hmm? Okay, so I actually have the results from a couple classes worth of students, so we can kind of see this. So I had, let's see, 3 plus 4 makes 7. This was a couple classes worth of students. So I had 7 students in these two classes that had cats but no dogs. And then over here I had, let's see, 9 and 12. So 21 students had dogs but no cats. And 9 students had both. That's the overlap. Right? So if you look over here, 16 students in total had cats. It's just some of them have cats alone and some of them have cats and dogs. And then, just grab another color here, 30, 30 students have dogs. 21 of them are dogs with no cats and 9 of them are both. And then, of course, there are some lonely souls out there that have neither. <laughs> so the people that have none, I'm just going to put it out here. The people that have neither cat nor dog was four. Oh, it's so sad. Right? No fuzzy little lumpkins to give you cuddles. Right? Okay, so there you go. So you can have both. That's the point. So what makes it not disjoint, it's a little weird, not disjoint is because you can have both. Whereas disjoint is because you can't have both. There's no overlap here. So if there's no overlap, no ability to have both, that's disjoint. No overlap. Whereas this one has an overlap. If you have an overlap, if you can have both at the same time, then they are not disjoint. Or in other words, they're joint, right? They're joined together. All right, so let's put our new and found knowledge to the test and see if we can do it with an example. So we're going to decide whether the following events are disjoint or not. So you roll a six-sided die. I've got a six-sided die. Rolling a four and rolling a six. So there's a six. So if I roll it, whoop, and it's a four. Huh? 
then it's not a six. You can't have both the same time and roll it once. Oh, let me switch to a color. If you're only going to roll that die one time, it's either a four or a six, but you cannot have both. So this is disjoint. There's no overlap. Cannot have both at the same time. Not with one die. You're rolling a six out of die, just one six out of die. You can't do both. Now, what about rolling a two at an even number? So a two is a two. Even numbers are two, four, and six. So they have an overlap. It's two. So this is not disjoint. Because two is in both events. All right, what about when you draw one card from a deck, drawing a red card and drawing a spade? Mm. All right, so let's go back and look at the deck of cards. It's right here in our notes packet. Red card are hearts and diamonds. So if you draw one card, it can be red or it can be a spade, but you can't have both, right? There's no overlap there, right? Because spades are not red. So this is disjoint because you're only drawing one card Spades are not red, right? So you cannot have both, right? Cannot have a red spade. A red spade is impossible, right? We saw that earlier. What about a red card and a jack? Well, that can happen because there's a jack of hearts and a jack of diamonds. So since that can happen, that's not disjoint. It is possible to draw a card that is both red and jack. So that is not disjoint. So the jack of hearts and the jack of diamonds are red. Diamonds are red cards. Or I guess I could just say are in both categories. They're in both events. They're jacks and they're red. All right. All right. You want to select a student at random. The student is 30 years old or older and the student is under 18. Okay, well, if it's one student, the student cannot be both things. I should have capitalized both of them. Sorry about that. So a student cannot be both under 18 and over 30, unless they have magical powers, right? So that's not gonna work. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's in some you know Marvel movie of some kind, but that's not gonna work. Okay, so this is disjoint, right? You cannot have one student do both of these things. because all you're drawing is a student and one student cannot be both things simultaneously. That's what me it means to be disjoint. Simultaneously. I forgot my U in there. <laughs> all right. Now... What about a student is the president of the debate team and a student is vice president of the choir, which selected off of yours truly. I was vice president of the choir <laughs> my senior year of high school. All right, so that is not disjoint because I was capable of doing both things. Although we did not actually have a debate team. I just made that part up. All right, so one student could do both. One student can do both. 